Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Gina and in today's video we're going to be getting into the really cool stuff which is actually all the decorating of the library. Um, you would have seen in the last video, a couple of videos that I've actually created the uh, spiral staircase out of some wooden fans um, which was a really fun project to do and I've also created the structure of the library and also the room next door which I'll get to that in a much later video. But really excited to now be able to put in all the details and actually this is the bit that I really enjoy. I have gone ahead and actually painted up the bookcase which is just in a brown paint as well as the back wall. I'm sure that you probably don't necessarily need to see painting which is quite a tedious project. And yeah so hopefully you will enjoy coming along on this journey with me and let's see how it all comes together. So to begin with we're going to create some architraves and I'm going to create these from scratch out of um, one millimeter mat board and I'm going to cut um, three pieces one eight millimeter six millimeter and three millimeter and then I'm actually just going to layer them on top of each other to get the profile that I'm looking for. And then this is the final result of the architrave. It's got just enough detail and once it's all painted up and highlighted it's going to fit perfectly into the project. Moving on to the windowsill, I've created a template out of foam board. Um, for some reason I thought that I'd be able to use the foam board but then quickly realized that it was going to be too thick. So I'm just going to trace that out onto matte board and use that instead. So the mat board is perfect to perfect thickness to fit inside the window, but I realised um, that it needed to have the thickness coming over the front face of the window, which is sort of sits inside the library. And so I've gone back to my original idea, which was the foam board, but instead of using the whole piece, I'm just going to cut off that front edge and glue it to the mat board um, cutouts that I've created. And this actually works really well from a thickness point of view. And the next challenge was that the foam board, because it's got that raw edge, I needed to cover it with a piece of cardstock. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just cutting a small, um, piece which is the same thickness as the mat board and uh, foam board together and then I'm just going to glue that uh, and bend it around each end. Once the glue's dried, I'm going to cut off those excess pieces and then just dry fit it uh, into the windows uh, at the top and bottom just to make sure it fits. Now we can move on to actually cutting and fitting the architraves. So I'm just going to cut these to length and I'm going to mitre the corners just uh, using my mitre shears which have been incredibly handy in this project because you get a nice clean 45 degree angle. I'm going to start by gluing the top architrave in place and I'm going to come in about a millimeter to 1.5 millimeters. So when I do the window surrounds um, that will cover the foam board of the thickness of the walls, I want that to butt in, un, in behind the uh, architrave just so that it covers it up. So I'm going to do the top architrave and then I'm also going to fit the window sills in place. And so then when I can, when I put the side pieces in, then I can actually, or the side architraves in, I can actually bring those in also the same um, depth as well. So the same distance, which is, you know, one, one to 1 1.5 millimeters. Um, and I can just cut those to the right length.
So I'm just, once that's all dry, I'm just going to give it a coat of paint, which is basically the same colour as the walls and the bookcases. And later I'm going to go back and add some shadows and some highlights because um, being all the same colour, it just almost disappears. And I really want that detail that we've added into the architraves to stand out. Now we can move on to the shutters. What I'm doing here is just on a piece of matte board, I'm marking out the frame for each of the shutters and then I'm going to also trace around the exact same size onto a piece of card stock. The card stock is going to create the actual blades of the shutters. And to begin with I'm going to draw horizontal lines 3mm apart down the length of the shutters leaving about 10mm at the top and the bottom. Next I'm going to draw vertical lines which are going to be roughly one millimeter inside of the frame on each shutter. So I've measured out the inside measurement of the frame that I drew onto the mat board and then I'm just going to come in one millimeter on each side of that and draw that down. So to give you an idea of the shape that I'm going to cut into this card stock, it's kind of like an elongated H or a capital I that's kind of being pushed over onto its side. And we want to make sure that there's enough material left between each of the vertical marks so that we have something to pivot on that will actually create the blades of the shutter. So using a really sharp X-Acto blade, we're just going to cut each one of those pencil marks, but only between the two vertical lines. Um, which is on the inside of the shutter and then when we go through and cut the vertical lines basically you're going to be cutting like a dotted line and making sure that it cuts over the um, edge of each one of those horizontal lines and this will start to form the shutter blades. So once that's all done, I can move back to the mat board and start cutting out the shutters frames that I drew earlier. I'm just going to start by cutting out the central pieces to the um, each one, each individual shutter. It's just easier to do this while they're all connected together because there's a bit more material to work with. And then once those middle pieces are cut out, then I can go back and cut them out individually. For the piece of cardstock that we'd cut all the blades into, I'm just going to cut this piece in half rather than into individual shutters. I'm wanting to concertina the shutters when I've put them into the project, and so by doing that, that it just allows me to sort of uh, use that as a bit of a hinge. And this is another piece of cardstock that I'm going to fit to the back of the shutters. You're not really going to see it that much, but it'll just add a little bit more dimension than just the flat profile of the cardstock where I'd cut all the blades into. So again, I'm just going to cut this one into two pieces. Okay, so now it's time to glue all of these pieces together. I'm going to start with uh, gluing the mat board onto with the mat board frame onto the card stock which has got the cutout of the shutter blades. And then I'm just going to glue that extra piece of card stock on the back um, just to add a little bit more, more dimension. It's not going to be as much as the front, but then you're not really going to see that much of it anyway. So this is what the shutter looks like when it's been concertinaed up. And now we're going to move on to actually creating these blades. And I'm just going to use a, um, a set of tweezers. Um, and actually go in between each one of these blades and just bend them round. So where we've left uh, that material in between each one of those um, vertical lines, it's now creating a pivot point which you can easily twist round each one of those blades to, to create the shutters. So before I go ahead and paint 
the shutters I'm just going to apply a little bit of Mod Podge to each one of those blades. One it helps actually uh, glue them into place funnily enough um, but also because it's cardstock um, it, I just want to make sure that it's all sealed before I go ahead and actually paint it. So um, I'm just going to use the same colour blend which is basically a bit of brown mixed with a bit of black just to deepen the colour up which is the same colour as the bookcase and the walls. And I'm just going to put a coat of paint on all of the uh, all of the shutters. So before I go too much further, what I want to do is actually create some shadows and some highlights. So I'm going to do this with a dry brush of black, and I'm just going to go around all of the window uh, window architraves and just sort of put a bit of a shadow line. Um, onto the wall just to try and help the windowsill and the architraves to pop out a little bit. So now picking up a nice clean brush I'm going to basically do exactly the same technique uh, which is a dry brush but with white and what I'm going to do here is just try and pick up any of the details uh, on the architraves that we've added in, anything on the windowsill that we've added in, uh, any of those front edges on the windowsill that uh, might be catching a bit of light um, and it just actually helps um, you know create a little bit more of that detail or highlight a little bit more of that detail. So I'm going to do the same thing with the shutters. Oops, that's probably a little bit too much, but there we go. So um, as you can see, the shutters were looking pretty flat, but just by dry brushing over a little coat of white, it's not certainly going to turn them white, but it's just going to highlight all of those blades and just make them pop. And as you can see here, you can see uh, the shadows as well as the highlights as we start kind of fitting these into place. And then I thought, well, while we've got the white br brush out, um, why not uh, do some highlights on the bookshelves as well? So I'm not going to do too much here. I'm actually just going to um, just lightly touch on those front edges. Most of it's going to be covered in books anyway, but just on those front edges, just to kind of add it a little bit more dimension into it so it's not all one colour and all completely flat. So now that we've got the shutters in, glued into place and it's all painted up and highlighted and got some shadows in around the windows, we're going to move on to creating some shutter hardware. I'm going to have got this bead that I had in my stash uh, as well as some wire. It's probably around about the same thickness as a paper clip. And I'm also going to create the latch out of a bit of leftover fan detail. When I was looking at it, I was thinking, yeah, I could probably cut away some of that to create a little latch detail. And then once it's all painted up, you're not really going to notice that it's wood uh, as opposed to metal. So one of the things with the wire it is actually looking pretty flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some fixings. Uh, as if the um, hardware has been attached to the shutter. And to do this, I'm just going to cut some thin strips of paper. This is just photocopy paper, so not very thick at all. And then I'm just going to glue it and wrap it around um, the wire. So one at the top, one at the bottom, and then I'm going to do a couple um, in the middle. I'm just going to see how it all looks, and hopefully it will all come together when it's all painted up. 
So I've glued the beads into place so they're roughly in the middle of the pieces of wire and now I'm going to move on to creating these fixings. So I'm just going to grab that piece of paper and just add a little bit of glue on one side of it and then picking up the um, the hardware or the, the wire I'm just going to start by wrapping it around a couple of times around the um, the top of the wire there um, and this is just going to add a few layers of paper as it sort of gets wrapped around and this is going to create the fixings for each one of these pieces of hardware. I'm just going to try and zoom in a little bit on this one just so you can see what I'm doing but I'm just trying to ease on the paper just by rolling it around in my finger and then once I've kind of got to the thickness that I'm happy with I'm just going to cut that off and then roll that ex excess piece around. So once that's all done and it's all dried I'm just going to go ahead and paint it all black I'm just going I'm not going to put any highlights on this at all I'm just going to leave it matte black because that's actually how it would look anyway um, and I think there's enough highlights throughout the rest of the painting anyway. So while that's all got time to dry I'm just going to move on to another piece of the project. This is something I hadn't originally planned to do but as I started looking at the end wall I just felt like it needed something something more especially being sort of a Victorian type of library or definitely of a, of a later era there would have been a lot more details on the wall so I'm just actually going to create some little wood panels uh, they're not going to be too too detailed I was thinking about doing um, flowers and all sorts of other things but I've just decided to keep it pretty simple I mean ultimately you're not really going to see a lot of that wall because it's going to be hidden by the bookcase and um, most of the time you're going to be looking at other things in that room but I just wanted to add this because I felt that it just needed that little bit of extra so I'm just going to create this out of um, just some cardboard it's just some uh, um, like cereal box cardboard um, as well as some matte board so the white is the matte board and the brown is this like cardboard and I'm just going to layer them up I'm not going to do anything too fancy with it um, and I felt like this was probably this is going to be just enough to add the level of detail that I'm looking for So I'm just going to fix these under each one of the windows and I'm just going to line the outside edge up with the outside edge of the architrave and this is just like I say it's not a lot of room underneath each one of those windows but it's just going to add just a little touch of detail into the project. So once that's all dry and all glued into place I'm just going to do the same process as I've done with any, all of the others and just uh, paint this up with the same brown paint and then I'm going to come back and highlight it with a bit of white. So now I can fix the hardware to the shutters themselves and as I'm dry fitting it here I can actually see that the top and the bottom don't actually sit against the shutter and that's because the bead actually protrudes out quite a bit. So I'm just going to have to bend it ever so slightly just to mould it in so I can get some good fixing from the central bead as well as the top and the bottom which will give us the illusion that the uh, fixings that we've just created um, using the paper wrapped around it will, is actually sitting against the shutter. So 
then to glue the latch onto the bead in the middle to give it that uh, look, I'm just going to put a bit of glue on the latch itself and then just put it into place. And then I'm just going to repeat exactly the same process on the other side, just um, dry fitting it into place, bending it round to make sure that it fits at top and on the top and the bottom, and then just um, gluing it and then also gluing the wee latch onto that side as well. So there we have it, we've got the back wall basically finished now, we've done the shutters and the hardware, the architraves and the windowsills, we've actually added in some wood panelling as well, not to mention um, all of the painting, highlighting and the shadows um, to give it a really realistic effect. And I'm super happy with how this has turned out. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.